What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Sengoku Basara 2! So, uh, Motochika is almost done with his conquest, but unfortunately he has to go through some pretty tough opponents from here on out. Namely, the most iconic characters in the game, so... Here we gotta go up against the, uh, the Takada Cavalry, and next battle we're gonna have to go up against uh, Masamune, so that's gonna be loads of fun, I know. So, uh, this battle is gonna be not only up against Yukimura, but also Takada Shingen in the same battle at the same time. So that's going to be very challenging, and this is not the last time we're going to do this fight either. This fight is normally reserved for more like villain type characters, uh, because whenever the Takata clan is on the, the defensive, it's usually when there's a bad guy attacking them. So we get this a lot of times when we pick uh, Hideyoshi or anyone who's allied with Nobunaga, that kind of thing. So uh, this is uh, very similar to a mission we had in Boss R1, but it's been um, very much so refined. And I definitely appreciate that because it was obnoxious in the first game. So we have all of these uh, mounted units, the Takata Cavalry. And the command units within the Takata Cavalry have to be taken out. And luckily we have our, uh, our riflemen back here, our motley crew, who's ready to gun them down at the first sight. And uh, same thing with uh, if you were to be, you know, Nobunaga, anyone like that, you'd have the Archibus core. This is not the last time we're going to do this mission either before the end of this Let's Play, so you guys will be seeing it again. Uh, the downside is a lot of times they can kill the units that you need to kill, and if they do that, then um, you'll actually, you will not actually gain any progress towards completing this objective. So... It's not absolutely necessary to kill all of them in order to get the boss to spawn, but it does speed things up a little bit. So we're going to kill as much of these as we can. It's actually not as hard as it sounds, but it definitely took some practice for me to get decent at it. And then after a certain amount of time, we're going to get Saratobi Sasuke to spawn. And uh, once that happens, it's going to be... it's gonna, We're going to be going all out from then on out, so it's going to be interesting. So... I'm happy this Let's Play is doing well so far. It seems like it's doing a lot better than the Let's Play for the first game. Uh, as much fun as I had making that one, it wasn't as successful as I would suspect for a, such a nerd, you know, niche type of game, you know, with an anime influence. I figured it would be a little bit more uncommon of a Let's Play to find, and it would do a little better, so... This one seems like it's doing fine, though. I actually stumbled upon something Basa related uh, this week while I was on my vacation that is quite, <laughs> quite fascinating. I just can't help but laugh every time I look at it. They actually printed a strategy guide for Devil Kings, the botched American release of Sengoku Boss Rap 1. And it was like $3. I bought it, and I was like, I can't believe this exists. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen that that video, that I, did, I did like a version comparison video between the American version of Devil Kings and the actual Sengoku Basara HD collection, the original game as it was intended to be. And the, the differences are just hilarious. I really recommend you guys check it out. So when Sarutobi Sasuke comes in, he decides he wants to shroud the map in an eerie mist. So we can't really see what's going on very well. So we need to take him out in order to clear that. So, it's not required to take him out if you complete the objective or get close enough to completion to where the uh, bosses will spawn. You can just take them out and go straight for the objective. Uh, this map doesn't really take a whole lot of time because you don't actually have to progress from point A to point B. Um, you can optimize your time management pretty well by taking out these guys and uh, getting the bosses to spawn in quicker. So, it's a very unique fight in that regard. I like these type of unique maps usually, especially when the gameplay has been enhanced and it doesn't feel awful like it did in the first game, so, not bad. So, uh, Sasuke is taking quite a bit of damage. I'm, I'm hoping that I can take him out uh, before the other guys spawn in, and even if I can't, I may just be diligent and decide to take him out uh, while they're here. So, but that's going to be very dangerous, fighting all three generals of the, uh, of the, of the, of the uh, Kai faction all at once, the Takata Cavalry. So, it's going to be interesting. Luckily, he's already at half health, and he doesn't really stand much of a chance against us. So, I've already commented on who Sasuke is quite a bit. Obviously, with Motochika, he's going to have a couple of new secondary attacks for this one. One of which is sort of like he outstretches the anchor and pulls it in like a harpoon. Um, not that useful. It's okay for reaching out and grabbing some of these mounted units, but other than that, I don't especially care for it.
but I had to demonstrate it eventually. Alright, one left, and then we should be able to get the boss to spawn in. Obviously, there's more in one of uh, these enemies left in the map. And it's not just the mounted units, it's specifically the mounted units that have the uh, command unit, the name over their head. <laughs> oh my god, look at this ridiculous nonsense. Talking to Shingen does this in the anime as well. He'll, he'll ride two horses simultaneously, and he actually rode them up the castle wall of the Hojo clan in order to take them out in like the first episode or whatever. Uh, that was actually quite a, quite a bit of comedy there. So I'm not really sure what this move is supposed to be. I guess it's, I'm supposed to... It might be some kind of charging move where I can do an air juggle. It doesn't seem like it's very effective at all. I'm probably just going to stay away from that. I don't really much care for it. Alright, so the, the bosses are here on the map, and fighting both of them at the same time is going to be very, very tricky. Especially if we remember how dangerous Takata Shingen was in the first game. We definitely want to be wary here, so... Um, I'm going to be looking for areas where I can uh, replenish my health, and I'm also be luring them towards the back of the fence here, so hopefully they can get shot a couple times by the uh, uh, rifleman I have back here. Luckily, Takeda Shingen's tornado attack needs to be charged, as you can see, and it's even more over the top and ridiculous than it was in the previous game. But he telegraphs a little bit more when he's going to use it, so he can't just spam it and keep us permanently, like, stun-locked within that animation. Uh, which is something he could do in the previous game, which was a real dick move. But hopefully we will not succumb to that this time around. So we're fighting fire with fire, as you can see, because all three of these characters are fire elemental, and it seems like it's going over pretty well. It doesn't really seem like the elements have that much to do with uh, damage uh, increases or decreases. Like, characters don't necessarily have a weakness in this game, as far as I know. But... Sometimes you can get extra little effects from the uh, the elements, like being able to stun certain characters with electricity and things like that, being able to freeze certain enemies with, with ice. I don't think fire really does necessarily anything, and there might be a slight affinity uh, between light and dark, but again, it's really hard to say. It's, it seems like it's, it's a negligible difference, if anything. So this is getting pretty hairy, though. I'm, I'm taking a lot of damage against these guys. Even uh, blocking and dodging out of the way is not very good considering how fast Yukimura is and how uh, hard-hitting Takeda Shingen is. Sasuke is still alive over there. I mean, honestly, I don't need to really take him out in order to complete the map because all he does is really uh, add that extra fog effect to it. So Takeda Shingen actually has a, uh, a charging attack, almost like a, uh, like, like a like a minotaur. Like, like a red minotaur. <laughs> oh, oh, we hate Devil Kings, don't we? We hate it, so I, I actually think it's okay. I mean, it was my first exposure actually playing one of the one of the Bossor games. It was the first one that I owned before I managed to get Bossor 3. There's a demonstration of Yuki Mora's new animation for his spin attack there. It's one of my favorite moves that he can do. Of course, he improved on it quite a bit in Bossor 3, so when we get to that, you'll see a whole new Yuki Mora, and I'll try to play as him then, so we can take advantage of that. So, I'm happy to say there's quite a few new uh, Mosu games coming up in the roster for my future Let's Plays. Uh, a friend of mine just donated a copy of Arslan the Warriors of Legend to me, which is a uh, Koei Tecmo Dynasty Warrior style Mosu game that um, has the same character designer and writer as Fullmetal Alchemist. So, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, I've played a little bit of it. It has a two-player mode. Uh, it has some unique game gameplay mechanics, but other than that, it's pretty much par for the course for these uh, these kind of Koei Tecmo uh, Warrior-style Conquest games, these Mosu games. But, that being said, I'm still looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting further in the story. And, um... You know, it, apparently it's also based off an anime, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the anime ties in. Yeah, this little uppercut move that Monochika has is just useless, so I'm never really going to use that again. Um, obviously, I know the best moves I prefer to have with him, and I'll be switching over to those as we move into the final fight, of course, so... Alright, Takeda Shingen is almost down. We had to retreat and grab health there, but... Uh, it's all, all part of it, I guess, when you're fighting foes this tough. But yeah... So there's that, and then, then I'm happy to report that the uh, the Fate of Stella Let's Play is going quite well. Um, Berserk comes out in about another month or so. 
And uh, there's another game, and uh, like another Koei Tecmo Mosu game I was interested in picking up called uh, Knights of Azure. Um, if you guys know anything about that, let me know. I'm, I'm looking into it right now. It's about 25 bucks or so at, at GameStop. I'll pick it up the next time I have money to do so. Man, he's really being stubborn. There we go. Yeah, talking to Shingen is still one of the toughest characters in this game, and he just stands there proudly with his arms folded as if he's not been defeated when in reality he has. Yeah, managed to get his gauge off there too at the last minute, which is kind of scary. Yeah. 